and Mike swap little black and blue's 347 inch internals to an aftermarket dart block in the quest for boosted power. We're back again, and today we're continuing on an engine project that has gained a ton of popularity with you viewers. It's an engine combination that yielded big power numbers for such a small combination, and 100% of the parts were sourced straight out of the Summit Racing catalog. Our initial goal was to take you through a two-stage build that required no specialty parts or special trips to the machine shop. Now this engine's purpose was to have streetable manners, but still be able to go down the drag strip in confidence. Here's how we accomplished those goals. We ordered a fully machined five liter Ford block from Summit Racing. It was already clearance for stroker cranks. An Eagle competition rotating assembly filled its voids to 347 cubic inches. We ran a Lunati hydraulic roller camshaft and the compression ratio was 10.4 to one. AFR CNC'd Renegade heads topped them off and a Victor Junior intake topped off with a 750 CFM QFT black diamond carb to make 507 horsepower at the flywheel. Then we upped the ante for stage two. By swapping out to a Lunati solid roller cam, Jessel shaft rockers, a Super Victor intake, a 950 QFT black diamond carb, and up the compression eight tenths of a point to 11.2 to one where it made 566 horsepower, 455 pound-feet of torque. Those kind of numbers out of 347 inches is downright impressive. So we decided that would warrant stage three and that would include pouring some boost to it. And that also means we're gonna have to change some parts, but the majority of them are gonna stay. That's right, we're moving most of these parts over to a new aftermarket block. That's because the factory 302 blocks start to develop issues around the 600 horsepower mark. They'll develop cracks in the lifter valley and that'll work its way all the way down to the mains. So with the addition of a turbo, we knew this one was short lived. Replacing it is this Dart Iron Eagle small block Ford. It is the standard if you want to make big power, especially boosted power. It has added material everywhere and it's made out of premium, high strength cast iron. We'll show you a few comparisons in a few. The first step of any build is to have clean parts. The block is going in the jet washer. The other parts that are being phased out start with the rod bolts. We're getting rid of ARP's 8740s for their 2000 bolts that are rated for a higher horsepower level. Now also going down the road is the solid roller in the engine now. For this hydraulic roller that's specced specifically for our turbo setup. And the Molly flat tops are also gone. They're being swapped out for these purpose built turbo pistons from DSS Racing. More on these later. Finally, no more carburetor. We're swapping out to Holly EFI. And check this out. This is the original Super Victor we ran with the carburetor. We had it converted over to port fuel injection. And controlling the amount of boosted air into the engine is a Holly 1000 CFM throttle body. To be able to put those new parts to use, we have to get the ones we're reusing off and out of the stock block. For the new Dart foundation. And just so you know, our goal is for it to hold in over 1,100 horsepower. Take a look at these dramatic differences between the two blocks. The cylinder walls of the stock block are a thin wall casting. The darts are almost 200 thousandths thicker. The other big difference is the amount of material in the main webbing. And this goes for the rest of it as well. It's beefier to make it more stable and rigid to handle big power. First to go in are the dart cam bearings specific to this block. Now they have a certain journal location. Done. So make sure you follow the instructions. One more. Good. Clevite main bearings are next and assembly lube covers them. With all the bearing clearances checked and where we want them, we can slide the Teflon rear main seal on the back of the crank. Now it goes in for good. It's from their competition line and came with the ESP armor finish. Now the bearings go in the caps, which can be guided down the studs and seated with a dead blow, followed by the washers and nuts. Everything is final torque to 80 pound feet on the studs, 65 on the outers, and 35 on the small front and rear ones. Now comes this trick main girdle from DSS Racing. It's made from three quarter inch billet 6061 T6 aluminum. 
It eliminates main cap walk and dampens damaging harmonics. It's a two-piece design and it fits on here like this, but we can't tighten it down since we need to have access to the rod bolts, and that's coming up next. Continuing with assembly, a turbo-specific bump stick is positioned in the cam tunnel. We're back, and stage three of this build continues. This Lunati camshaft is a special grind designed for our turbo application. Lift at the valve is 613 on the intake and 608 on the exhaust. Duration at 50 is 235 to 45 respectively. The lobe separation is 118 degrees, here's why. The wider the lobe separation in degrees, the less overlap the cam has, and that keeps the intake charge from blowing out the exhaust, and that's important in any boosted application. The original Lunati timing set goes on next. Before the cam is degreed, we'll install the piston and rod assemblies. The rods are the same Eagle forged H-beams. The pistons are definitely new. We ordered this set to our specs with a negative 22cc dish and two valve reliefs. Now on the side of the skirts is an anti-friction coating and up top is a ceramic thermal barrier which isolates heat in the combustion chamber and protects the top of the piston from extreme heat. Now the X-Groove is their patented technology, here's how it works. On the upstroke, fuel wash and normal debris are swept into the X-Groove and forced down into the oil pan. Now that keeps the protective oil film intact on the critical areas between the skirt and the cylinder wall. On the downstroke, excess oil and debris are swept into the X-Groove and exit the oil drain back holes, keeping the clearance between the piston and cylinder wall cleaner, which reduces the oil load on the oil ring. The ring pack is from Total Seal and it's pretty trick. It's got an 043 gapless top ring, a ductile iron Napier second, and a conventional chrome rail three millimeter oil ring. There's nothing special about how the assemblies go in. Just make sure you have a nice ring compressor, like this one we ordered from ARP. These rings are extremely flimsy, so take your time. Now the original oil pump and pickup can go on. And the center support you saw earlier adds more strength to the stud girdle. With a degreed camshaft, the timing cover can go on. Sealing up the bottom end is a one-piece pan gasket and the original Moroso oil pan. ARP fasteners will snug it down. Back up top, our new short travel hydraulic roller lifters can drop in. Cometic MLS head gaskets with a 40 thousandths compressed thickness will seal the heads to the block. These AFR cylinder heads are the same ones we ran before to make big power on such a little engine. Now we attributed most of the power to these heads, but there was some confusion about what we originally received. Check this out. These heads do have the 2050 intake and the 1600 exhaust valve, but here's the kicker. They don't have a 205 cc intake runner. This is a 195. This is their competition head, and to us, it speaks for itself. Due to the additional cylinder pressure the boost is going to create, we're using ARP head studs instead of bolts this time around. The final torque is 110 pound-feet. The new lifters have a taller body, so a shorter push rod is required. Good old comp cams sent us this set to accommodate them. Extreme pressure lube coats the ball end to prevent premature wear at startup. Our Jessel shaft rockers are going back on. 1.7 ratio on the intake, 1.6 on the exhaust. Due to the lifter design, the lash is set at zero, and we'll do that in the dyno room. With the Felpro intake gaskets in place, we'll lay down a couple of beads of Loctite Ready gasket on the China rails. The Super Victor intake we ran with the carburetor has a new look, and is sealing up the lifter valley. 120 pound per hour Holley injectors will supply fuel to this small block and Holley's universal fuel rails will top them off. The School of Automotive Machinists did this conversion for us. Topping off the intake is Holley's 1000 CFM billet throttle body that houses the TPS sensor and idle air control motor. With fittings welded in the valve covers, we repainted them with VHT Wrinkle Plus black paint. The rest happens in the dyno room. A short ride to the dyno room for the rest of Black and Blue's components. On guide the hose. As always, our favorite part, in. the dyno. Oh my. It starts with docking the engine and cart to the dyno's chassis. 
Now our Hellion Power System shorty headers go on and ARP fasteners secure the thick flange to the head. And if you noticed, they do face the wrong direction. Now the crossover pipe is installed, which connects the passenger and driver hot side together. Due to our power level, we're running two 46 millimeter precision wastegates, which gives us more surface area to vent the unused exhaust through. Our precision turbo is a heavy hitter. It's a 76 millimeter that has a ported cover and billet CNC compressor wheel. It's equipped with ball bearings and will support close to 1200 horsepower on this 347. Hellion's heat kit for a Fox Body Mustang is what we're using. It includes these pipes to direct the exhaust towards the rear of the car, or in our case, the dyno room. The oil feed line from the engine's oil gallery to the turbo is installed now. The water neck is necessary, and we're using a simple Spectre 4 inch cast aluminum plenum as the inlet for the throttle body. For this dyno session, we're going to run a front accessory drive so we know the exact output of the engine when it goes in the car. Now this is a Jones Racing Products front drive that includes a power steering pump, a vacuum pump, water pump, and alternator. Now all the accessories are driven off of a mandrel on the front of the crank and are turned by either a cog or a rib type belt. Now this system is really cool because it's lightweight, it reduces harmonics, and most importantly it's available in any drive ratio. So you can custom tune the application to your engine whether it's a race car or a street car. And I've got to say this is some of the nicest stuff we've ever seen. The mandrel bolts directly to our ATI balancer. An Edelbrock water pump is supplied in this kit. It's powder coated black to match the rest of the drive. Jones's vacuum pump is a two-stage billet aluminum gear style. We're driving it at 65% of the engine speed. It has two suctions and one exhaust port. It's easy to mount to the block or an engine plate as well. Their 120 amp high output alternator is next. It only weighs 12 pounds and features internal fans and a one wire hookup. A lightweight aluminum power steering pump with a built-in reservoir wraps up the accessories for this engine. It's available for rack and pinion or steering boxes and the reservoir holds a generous 18 ounces of fluid. Mandrel pulleys are next. They are keyed so make sure you use them in all the right places. Next to go on are the belts. This kit is super easy to put on and it's as tough as it looks. One hose runs from each valve cover to the suction port on the vacuum pump. This line runs from the exhaust port to a catch tank, then from the catch tank to the regulator located in the valve cover. Before we prime it, we have to fill it with motor oil. A motor oil has to do more than just lubricate. It acts as a hydraulic fluid and also functions as a cooling agent for the pistons. We're using a new Pennzoil Super Synthetic called Platinum Plus. It's made with a technology that converts natural gas into a liquid-based oil. Unlike refining from crude oil, this process is 99.5% pure. So we've been working on this process since the 70s where we can take natural gas and convert it from a gas into a liquid. We run it through this special chemical process with a catalyst. We can take very consistent molecules in natural gas and purpose build the type of molecule we want to make, in this case, a lubricating oil, or in other cases, we can make fuel. The nice thing as well about the Pure Plus technology is its ability to withstand really hot temperatures. So the oil has to be able to withstand those hot spots within the engine, especially like around the piston rings. You don't want those piston rings to start to build up deposits because real quick you're going to end up losing power, you're going to end up uh, scoring the cylinder wall, things go south quickly. And keeping the compressed air cool going into this engine is a large vertical flow dual inlet intercooler from Hellion. The cold side piping runs from the turbo down to the intercooler and from the intercooler to the intake plenum. Now the engine is completely plumbed. This turbo excess blow off valve relieves compressor pressure surge caused by the changing gears or letting off the throttle. Time for priming. Reverse rotation on the drill will force oil through the engine and turbo just like if the engine was running. A familiar face is in the house to tune the turbo small block.
We progress little black and blue to the state it's in now, and it looks downright impressive. Chris Bennett is here from the School of Automotive Machinists. He and his team already had their hands on it. Dart sent us the block uh, with my direction and the other instructors. Students checked the block, uh, lined honed it, board honed with torque plates, checked the deck, well, we deburred it, and that was it for the block. The cylinder head class was responsible for converting the intake manifold to EFI. So they welded the bungs in, fit the fuel rails, and uh, we're ready to go. Finishing the engine off is an MSD dual sync distributor controlled by a Holley HP EFI fuel injection system. And Chris is really familiar with it. He's doing the tuning for us. Now he's starting with a Holley tune in the global folder. This is a shortcut to speed the process up. We know that this setup is capable of making really big power, but today is about getting a nice, safe tune-up, and then I'm lucky enough to be having this engine going between the frame rails of my own 1963 Galaxy, and that's when we're going to really lean on this Rowdy 347 with the goal of making 1,000 horsepower at the tire on the chassis dyno. All right, Mike, let's, let's see if it'll run. All right, here we go. All right. Nice, smooth fire up. Idle's clean. I'm happy with that. Oil pressure's really good. Pat is verifying the timing on the balancer matches what the Holly system is showing. What'd you say the compression was, Mike? 8.8 .8 to 1. Okay. So if we ran this thing in A, it'd probably make between 350, 375. I'd, I'd agree with that. Um, it's going to take quite a bit of boost to get it to the power level we want to see it, but the engine's built for it. So. That's, what you, that's what you build it for. Yep. Right? First, we'll take it from 35 to 4,500 RPM to give Chris a data log. Loads up nice, good oil pressure. About 10 pounds of boost. 10 pounds? 10 pounds. 570, 474. You want me to go ahead and make a 55, 6,000 before we make any adjustments? Sure, we could, let's turn it to 6,000. This engine has great manners right out of the gate. The dyno is flawless, and the sound of the turbo spooling can get a tortoise excited. Beautiful. Nice and smooth. 629, 582. We're almost doubling the NA estimates at yeah. 10 pounds, so we're... It's right where it should be. Pretty solid. And it's still climbing pretty good, too. Mm -hmm. It can do more. A couple turns on the regulator means bigger boost numbers. Seven forty-six on power, seven thirteen on torque. Now a spring change is in order, going from a ten to a sixteen pounder on both sides. Seven hundred and eighty-two horsepower, seven hundred and sixty-six pound-feet of torque. That sent us in the right direction. One more spring change and a final run. I'm good. All right. Watch the boost. I'm watching the boost. It's amazing how efficient turbos are these days. Lag is a thing of the past, and they put off a sound you'll never get sick of. They mean business. Now we're talking 806 horsepower, 782 on the torque gauge. Well, it's all quiet back in the dyno room, which means we're done for the day. Now, a big thanks goes out to Chris Bennett and the School of Automotive Machinists. The next time you see that beast, it'll be between the frame rails of Pat's 63 Galaxy. We'll see you next time.